All right, we are going to look at the behavior of waves now. So reflection. So we learned a little bit about this, and you guys have kind of um, heard about this before, but reflection okay, is just the ability of waves to be bounced back out. So there's the law of reflection. That's the angle of incidence. So in other words, whatever angle the waves are coming in at um, are going to be reflected at the same angle. So the angle of incidence, the angle it's hitting the uh, reflective surface at is going to be bounced off at the exact same angle. So this angle right here and this angle right here are the same size. Okay. Reflection occurs when a wave strikes an object and bounces off of it. Okay, so it doesn't get absorbed by it, it bounces off of it. And all types of waves can be reflected, <clears throat> not just light. So sound waves, water waves, okay, anytime there is a wave, it's going to be, um, and it hits a solid surface that cannot absorb it or refract it, excuse me, it gets reflected. Okay, so understand that. Refraction is another thing that can happen to a wave. Refraction is the bending of a wave that's caused by the change in speed as it moves from one type of medium to another. So in other words, when you have a pencil in water, or if you've ever noticed this when you were fishing or whatever, um, light is going to move at a specific uh, speed, wavelength, okay, wave speed in the air. Okay? That's one type of medium, but when it goes into the water, the water is a different type of medium, and so it slows or changes the speed of the wave. Um, and that's why you kind of end up looking like the object you're looking at is not where it is. So in other words, this pencil right here looks broken, but that's only because the waves of the light okay, are moving at a certain speed to here, and then all of a sudden they're moving at a different speed once they enter the water. And so therefore, your object looks as if it's in a different place than it actually is. Um, understand that the greater the change in speed, the more the wave bends. So if this was even, even a thicker substance like corn syrup or something that slowed the waves even more, okay, uh, this pencil would look even more bent. All right, diffraction is the third uh, option when it comes to the behavior of waves. Diffraction of an object causes a wave to change direction and bend toward it. Okay, Both refraction and diffraction cause waves to bend. However, refraction occurs when a wave passes through an object, so into an object, and diffraction occurs when a wave passes around an object. So here are the different beams of light and what's going on with them. So this is refracted the light hits, it travels through the object but is bent because it is changing mediums. There is the reflected, so this is a non, uh, this is the light that isn't able to go into the water and it is reflected at the same angle it hits the water, okay? And then diffracted is when it hits it and it doesn't travel through it but the wave is still bent um, and it moves around the droplet of water. So these are the different three options. Diffraction, the one that we just talked about being the last one I discussed. Now there's a couple of um, things for interference. So waves can be interfered with. You can mess them up. Okay, When two or more waves overlap, they can combine and they form a new wave. Um, and understand that um, Interference can either be constructive, where the waves combine together to make a greater wave, or destructive, where the waves kind of even out with each other and cause the wave to go away altogether, or at least become smaller. So this would be an example of a constructive wave. We have a wave with a certain amplitude here, and then we have another wave with a certain amplitude here, and they're traveling together, so when they interfere or combine, they create a wave with a much larger amplitude, basically twice the amplitude. So now this is a stronger wave with a larger amplitude with more energy. Then you have destructive interference. So when the waves are moving at different um, ways, see we have a it's positive here and it's going down to a trough here. Because of that, when they interfere with each other, they essentially even out. 
Okay, the energy that was positive here and the energy that was negative here, they were the same. And so you end up getting no wave at all. So that is an example of a destructive interference. Understand that any time the energy of a wave goes down, it is destructive interference. And remember, energy is um, shown through amplitude. So anytime you get the amplitude decreasing when you have interference between two waves, that means it was destructive interference. Whenever you get the amplitude increasing as two waves combine, that is constructive interference. All right, I hope that makes sense. Please write down any questions you have.